Okay, this is a real quick video on the valves. It seems like everybody's always having stuck valves or things of that nature. But what I've found, at least on my unit, these are called LaSalle Bristols. And they are controlled by the cables. This would be my gray tank, number two. This would be my black tank. What I found by going, getting into this is this is usually up on the upside because when they put these things together the whole system is upside and the technician that's installing all this is looking at it from basically where i'm at now laying on my back down so naturally he's coming in and laying things from the top so he wants these holes uh, where he can get access to them he doesn't care about us so what I found when I was taking this apart, thinking I had to replace this because I bent my handle pushing that in, that these wires, and this has been stripped, fashioned into a little handle so I can open and close it as I need to. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. The um, If you've twisted this or got your OCD in the way and tightened these things up, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because these need a lot of play You'll see that this and this wire for my black tank, it's probably at the smallest apex that it wants to, that it should be. Actually, if I could find a way easily, I would extend it up a little bit further up into this area. So it's got a nice round loop there and it goes up through the top. Anyways, what I found after taking off the valve is that I really didn't need to replace the valve uh, gate itself. It's, it flows in and out without too much trouble. That's where I made this handle. And if I pull it out, you'll see, if I can do it without twisting, you'll see where my red tape is marked. That's as far as I want that gate valve open. But I also found when I took it apart, after seeing some people, there's a screw right here that takes off I don't know what they call it. Basically the travel length of the cable, it goes in there and then that tightens down on this. And then there's a set nut on this silver part right here that holds that into. Well, I couldn't get access to this. I couldn't find the set nut. What I figured out later is that I had uh, jacked up the, the line so much that this thing had spun. And lo and behold, once I got it out, right there's the set nut, which is a three millimeter and that's what your cable sets in so right now the valve is all the way open and there's this that goes on to my new cable this thing here if i can find it is what determines how far that valve opens and closes so if you're somebody that has uh, uh water getting through as you travel or whatever or you think water's getting through from your one of your tanks my suspicion is is that this needs to be adjusted and how do you adjust it well i don't know if i can get a good picture but there's a set screw that goes in right here but it's on the other side so your set screw is on this side you undo it all the way and then you can adjust where this sits and sets on top of the cable itself so you would have to pull this out come from the top or if you can rotate your cable like this, like I'm doing right now, as you see how I'm rotating it, you can, you can get to that set screw, pull that out, make the adjustment to where it pushes that, that uh, gate valve further in. So probably isn't your uh, gate valve. I think it's called an X valve or something like that. It's probably because your gate valve is not setting all the way in if you're getting water coming through there because really this is just compressed and these nuts are not very tight you don't want to crush that too far where the gate valve won't go in but you can take this off adjust that to where it pushes further in and then you will be able to close that off without having to take out the valve now for me I'm going to take this off because I've already taken it off once to figure all this stuff out. But if you don't want to deal with the black valve or you don't want to get into this, these just come off and then you spread this out. My 
gray tank will move apart just enough to slide it in and out. And then when I put it back in, I'll put some uh, uh, silicone uh, plumber's grease on there so it opens and closes. I'll, I'll set this set valve in. I'll push this all the way in and then I'll make the adjustments to where this come, uh, make sure it goes all the way. And that uh, set nut that goes into this screws all the way in and then this screw will come all the way in. So this, I've already turned it upside down because this is where everything's gonna be accessed. If I ever have to do my black or my other gray tank, which is this way, I'll just flip this around so I have access. Hopefully I won't have to do that. But if you get in here, just flip these around because it doesn't make a difference what side that goes on. But this is, this is up here. Right, there's the nut, there's the three holes. Those three holes, I figured out that if I slide this uh, set nut right about, well, right to that location, right here at the end, that's as far as I want it to be open. And then this gives you access depending on where you're, you're coming from. I'll take this out, put the new, uh, cable in set that in there and then I'll shut it all the way once I got that figured out I will set the uh, set that in this space right here is so I guess you can get into this and gently go back and forth there's not a lot of room and honestly leaving the, the leaving this in is probably more of a pain in the ass so you go ahead and figured out from there but this is what I'm replacing today is this right here all the way around what I also try to figure out is how long is the cable well it's easier said than done but uh, I got a feeling at the factory they've got these long cables and they cut as, as much as they want to be and this is nothing more than a rubber housing with this around it so you cut the rubber housing and then you cut this I will say this is pretty strong stuff. So unless you've got a really good um, wire cutter, and actually you don't really need a wire cutter. You need a, uh, I got a Nipex, uh, basically it's called a mini bolt cutter that can handle this without too much trouble. But the first time I cut it before I got this bolt cutter is I just use a Dremel with a cutting tool and that enabled me to get through that. I hope this kind of helps out a little bit, but the chances are if you've got leaks, this needs to be adjusted. This can't be removed till that nut up or that screw is removed. This slides out. You need to spin around, take this off, make the adjustments. And I hope this is about as clear as clear as mud, but it's pretty clear to me exactly what people's problems are. It isn't necessarily the gate because there's really not a whole lot to do with the gate. It just slides in and out unless you've got some type of uh, debris that is not um, soft. It's hard you might not be able to close the gate all the way but chances are it's this that, that needs to be adjusted or like mine my cable I had twisted it around or bucked it up or something like that and it wouldn't shut all the way so now that what that did is when I pushed it in when I was dumping it bent the handle and once you bent that bend that handle if it's not straight and true it's not going into that housing that's at the very end of this. So I'm gonna replace this and hopefully be done with it. But I'm gonna take these four nuts off, spread it, put it in there, make sure it's adjusted right, and then put this in there. I'll, I will have already wound my wire through and come out here and I'll play with it. But um, I've seen a lot of it recently and this is the LaSalle Bristol with the connection and the other one is the Valterra and that's really a whole lot simpler, but on the same basic means when it comes to uh, how to do this. But this little thing was elusive. When I was trying to get to it, I couldn't find it for nowhere. I didn't understand that by just twisting this, I, I would have been able to access, pull this out without having to remove that. I hope this helps. So more explanation of how this valve works. You see how I've got it out now and you'll see sorry for the jittery i've got it marked with tape at the very tip of that is as far as i want it to go out of the red tape 
and you'll see where it's not quite completely because if you get too far there's like a little niche in there and it really becomes a bugger to go back in what that stuff there is uh, silicone plumber's grease to help it slide in and out and uh, I just wanted to kind of follow up on the sliding action of how that goes the main thing is is make sure you don't put these tighten these things down to 100 foot pounds because the tighter that goes on top of this the harder that it presses on that seal and the harder it is for this gate valve to open and close okay and if you put that little plumber's silicone plumber's grease in there it'll just help slide it in and out but I'll remove this now my little handle that I made from the old wire and I'll go into that set that up and this is what's used to make the adjustments how far the gate valve opens and shuts and there's a little set screw that sets on the inside of that and I'll, hopefully I'll be have the time to be able to show you exactly uh, how that works okay just took a few minutes to attach this now I'm hooked up correctly it, uh, if your gate valve when it's all the way shut doesn't completely shut down here usually you just got to peel back a little bit of this uh, housing to allow more to be exposed because this inside bumps up against this you set that set nut in there flush it locks it this doesn't move then once this goes back in and then you can put your handle in put your screw in and now I'm all set to be able to put this back in I'll make sure that the, the holes are facing towards the ground and not up where they're not accessible and uh, hopefully I'll be done with this modification the main thing is if as you route this make sure you allow for plenty of play because you need at least from what it's saying 12 14 16 the bigger the loop the better it is because what happens is it binds up and it becomes uh, really unworkable so don't let your OCD get in the way this is designed to have a big uh, big loop in it it's not a bicycle cable because you're pushing and pulling braided lines doesn't work that's why it's a solid line and it, your lines are usually longer I think we bought a 84 inch or whatever and when I pulled off it I think I measured it to be uh, 96 and the, the largest one I could get on short notice was the 80 something uh, inch, but it works. And I'll put this in here, it will be no problems. And hopefully I won't have to deal with this and I'm making sure I'm giving all the, the uh, looseness I can on my rest of my, my cables and I'll be done with this little project. Um, and I'll take better care when I'm pushing this in because I don't want to get up underneath here. All in all, it's not a difficult thing to do it took me a little while to figure out there were a couple good videos uh, out there on YouTube um, but I'm finding that uh, they don't address specifically how the workings of this and this rod will spin around in there based off of how you turn it at the top so if you get in there and you can't see your set nut to pull that out loosen your cable from the top and then just kind of twist it around and eventually that will pop out one wear on these four little spots and again it's a three millimeter and the one that takes the set that puts the set screw inside of this was a 332nd uh, don't ask me why they're using uh, uh, metric and standard uh, in between but maybe I just don't have them right okay hope this helps